Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into the sixth and final Spring 2024 update from Gav's Weather Feet. So here we go again, we've come to the end of our Spring updates. This is our final update ahead of next week's Spring 2024 forecast. It's been a nice little season of updates, always a little bit shortened for the Spring updates as we take December off to have a little bit of a break and a rest after the long season winter updates. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the spring updates that we've done for you over the past couple of months. This is, as I say, the final spring update, and uh, I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just to take that first video in series, our 6 said UK weather forecast. And uh, we're going to be live at 6 p.m. with the uh, 10 to 14 day. We're going to do our summer's watch, and we'll have some long range in that live stream as well. So uh, please uh, check out the live stream at 6 and check out the 6 m forecast if you would like to uh, do that. We've just hit 18,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, everybody, for getting us to 18K. If you aren't yet subbed to our channel, then uh, please give us a sub. And thank you so much, everyone, for uh, doing that. Thank you so much, Richard, for our amazing uh, spring update skip. It's been lovely, 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 hasn't it? Thanks so to Paul and Steffi. Our little bundles of joy there. Thank you so much. <laughs> so much to our fluffy replacements Paul and Steffi and thank you so much to Richard for our gift as well that's incredible thank you so much uh, thank you so much Richard we've got a special spring forecast gift that we're going to show you um, next week so this will be the final time final time for now anyway that uh, you're going to see Paul and Steph so <laughs> Our little bundles of love. Uh, thank you, Shona Richard, for our uh, for our gift. And also, thank you so much to Shrian as well. Shrian Brian for sorting out all of the uh, relevant years for us. We're doing an end so special today, actually. More about that in a second. So thank you so much to uh, Shrian for getting all of our years and springs together for us. Hashtag Team Gab, as always. Doing an amazing job for Gav and for all of us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, to Richard to Shrier. Right, okay, let's have a look then. So, let's start off with this. So, this is from CFSB2, showing the uh, Region 3.4 sea surface temperature anomaly forecast for the next several months. So, we've had an El Nino, of course, quite a strong El Nino as well, going to around 2 degrees above average temperature. And almost on the side, dates in monthly periods on the bottom. We're currently here, so we're returning back to um, moderate to El Nino uh, uh, temperature levels. Now, if the forecast is correct, by the time we get through that April, <coughs> excuse me, since the middle of the spring, we should be returning back to uh, ENSO neutral conditions then. Typically, of course, both El Nino and La Nina will reach their peaks in the winter. So, sort of towards the end of the year, November, December, when both El Nino and La Nina uh, reach their peaks. And then you get a quick unravelling through the spring back to ENSO neutral. And then the next sort of scenario, be it El Nino, La Nina or ENSO neutral, will then take place from the summer onwards. So we see that by spring with CFSB2 is forecasting that uh, we should be into um, back into ENSO neutral condition. By July, CFS is forecasting that we have already descended into a landing year. But of course, that's much more relevant for our summer updates. Do, do, do. They'll be starting in a couple of weeks. Um, no, uh, more about, more about you know, a landing year potentially and, and summer when we get into our summer updates. But for this final spring update, we're going to be looking at uh, springs that are re reverting from El Nino to Enso Neutral, essentially. And Shrine has sorted out all of those springs for us. So we're starting off with the El Nino to Neutral Spring of 1954. This one has a lot of easy winds with high pressure sitting to our north and low pressure instead of south. So that does bring the wind in. Whoops, that does bring the wind in from an easy direction. It fires on from a cold February, which did have a lot of easy winds and Scandinavian highs as well. And that pattern obviously continues. Hold on. <coughs> So sorry, everybody. That pant obviously continues into the uh, into the spring, particularly the early part of spring of 1954. Very easy spring. So that's quite cold, that one, I think. They've got 1959. So this one is uh, a much warmer spring, actually. It has high pressure 
uh, Scandinavia, low pressure is out of the Atlantic. Much more of a southerly, sort of southeasterly type flow with big spring. Has a very long summer in uh, 1959. The summer begins, actually, in the spring. So March, April, May reveal the summer pattern. goes all the way on in September and October. It's a long, hot summer in 1959. And uh, and we see the pattern setting up there through the spring of 59. Basically, a warm and dry spring. Back to them. Um, we've got 1966, which is another El Nino to uh, neutral spring. This one much more unsettled. It's a very wet year, of course, in 1966 with lots of low pressure in from off the Atlantic into the north and the west of Europe as well. So that's just a mild and wet spring, really, that we have. But that one, we've got 1973 um, with high pressure just out to our west. Low pressure is to our east. And the thing with this spring is that we're often bringing the wind from like a northwesterly type direction a lot of the time. So that's a rather drier spring, but potentially rather cooler as well, I think, with that one. Uh, quite a long gap then to 1988. This is uh, a cool spring, actually, with low pressure to the east. A little bit of high pressure up towards ice and winds in from uh, a northeasterly direction. So obviously it follows on from an exceptionally mild winter for 87, 88, also quite wet. So we do have a mild winter cooler spring type thing there is some snow actually in uh, april 1988 i think uh 1995 is our next el nino to enso neutral spring with again high pressure to our west low pressure to the east quite a few cooler northwesterly winds through the earlier part of this spring so that's quite a chilly march actually again it's a very mild winter very mild very wet winter for 94 95 albeit there's one or two cold snapped here and there um march actually has the most snow of, of the winter really so there is a snow event in early march 1995 and again later on in the month there's some snow april also has quite a potent cold snap from the north during the middle part of the month. And May has a very, very hot May or a hot spell during early May of 1995 where the temperature really rises up and we get our first proper heat of what becomes a very long, hot, dry summer, of course. Uh, 2005 uh, up next. So this one. Uh, rather unsettled spring, low pressure in of the Atlantic, high pressure blocking around um, Greenland as well. This has a cold start to the spring. There's quite a long cold spell from the middle of February to the middle of March 2005, around a uh, three to four week cold spell. Once that breaks, so once that fades out, generally the rest of the spring is uh, quite mild, albeit uh, relatively unsettled. And then we've got 2007, which is also another El Nino to Enzo Neutral Spring. This one, again, has a lot of high pressure from the Atlantic into western parts of Europe. Low pressure tends to be uh, towards Greenland and Iceland. So we talked about this in, in past um, spring updates. Of course, have very dry and warm spell through March and April after a wet winter. We go into about eight weeks or seven weeks of that very dry weather, particularly in April, which is a really warm and dry month. Actually, summer is in April 2007. But what you don't get from the analogue is that we get to May and it all flips around and May turns significantly cooler and exceptionally wet through the latter part of the month, setting up what becomes, of course, the infamous deluge summer of 2007. We've got the spring of 2010 as our next spring. This one we're blocking around Greenland. Low pressure is to our south and east. Winds coming in from a north northeast direction. This follows on for cold winter, of course. As I was explaining before, very often when you get like a proper cold winter, that pattern does carry on into the spring. Not always, not every time does that happen. It didn't happen in 63, for example, after the daddy and cold winters. However, very often we do see when we have a cold winter that the pattern will continue on into the spring. And 2010 is a great example of that. And uh, then we've got 2016. I think this is our final year. We've got 2016 with high pressure again blocking to our north low pressure is to our south and east again winds coming in from an easy direction so this has a cold snap quite a potent cold snap actually in april of 2016 and overall it is a rather cooler spring again after an exceptionally mild winter right putting all of that together then this is how all march combined is looking when uh, el nino is going to enso neutral and we tend to get high pressure 
centre to the north with low pressure over and to the south. So there is a bit of cold potential with these marches, actually. A lot of the time, there'll be cold winter potential. Also, quite an unsettled signal. All Aprils combined look like that. So it is, it is a drier signal, actually. Blocking around Greenland and a ridge down into the west of Europe. Tend to have a trough of low pressure through Scandinavia. So a drier signal for the Aprils, albeit possibly rather on the chilly side. Um, and then all Mays combined when we're going from um, El Nino to Enso Neutral. Just looking unsettled really low pressure across the west of Europe so just a relatively <laughs> unsettled and wettest signal for those Mays. All springs combined when we go from El Nino to Enso Neutral looking like this. So there is a blocking signal up towards Greenland. Low pressure is uh, away to our south and east. And again, winds often coming in from that north or northeasterly direction. So definite cold snap potential actually with B springs when we go from El Nino to Enso Neutral. Of course, within that, you can have um, uh, like uh, be on the warm side of uh, Enso Neutral on the cold side of Enso Neutral. So if you like, you can take a while to get back to Enso Neutral. So you stay on the El Nino side or you can very quickly start to descend into um uh, in, into like a cold scenario, into like the cold side of Enzo Neutral, head towards La Nina and Shrine has broken these down for us within the uh within the Enzo Neutral Springs. So on the positive side, so still on the El Nino side, if you like, we've got the spring, albeit Enzo Neutral, we've got the spring of 1958, 1966, 1995. 2005, 2010, 2016. These springs are descending, you know, a little bit slower, perhaps. However, all marches combined look like that, still with a blocking signal up towards Greenland and Iceland, low pressure over the continent, still favouring bringing the wind off them from an east or a northeast direction. So cool, unsettled, maybe some wintry potential with that. All Aprils combined, we're on the positive side. The then so neutral looks like this. Again, we see a bit of a blocky seal up to the north, trough over Scandinavia. Not as unsettled for the Aprils, but there is a bit of uh, chilly potential with those Aprils, most definitely. And then all Mays combined, very similar signal, so just very unsettled for the Mays, a wetter signal when we get into the Mays. So there is still a little bit of blocking in evidence there with higher pressure up towards Greenland and Iceland. All Springs combined when we're on the El Nino side, we're on the positive side of Enzo Neutral looks like this with quite a lot of low pressure across the north and west Europe, higher pressure up towards Greenland and winds again tending often to be in from that northerly direction. And then what about if we go on to the negative side, onto the La Nina side of Enzo Neutral through the spring? How does that look? Well, all marches combined. By the way, this just includes 1954, 1973, 1988 and 2007. So these are quickly descending, of course, into um, La Nina and they did all have uh, quite strong into the summers of these actually. So you may see bees cropping up again actually. Bees just may crop up again when we get into our summer updates. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're still concentrating on spring. Now uh, all March is combined. Um, still looking rather unsettled. Low pressure. Whoops. Low pressure crossing west of Europe. Some higher pressure out of the Atlantic and up to our North East. Bear in mind exceptions. So 2007 for example is an actually very dry uh, anti-cyclonic march. All Aprils combined has an anti-cyclonic signal when we're descending quickly into La Nina. So uh, we tend to have higher pressure centred over, more or less over the top of the country. So it is a dry but potentially it's rather cool this signal again. Winds could be coming in from the North West. Bear in mind 2007 was uh, a very warm April April, uh, of course, but it's anti cyclonic signal much drier for the Aprils, and then what happens into the maze again, it doesn't matter whether we're on the warm or the cold side of Enzo Neutral, the maze always continues to look unsettled with plenty of low pressure in across uh, the west of Europe, so a rather wet signal for those Mays. and finally all springs combine when we are on the negative or La Nina side, the cold side 
of end so neutral looks like that so and that one anti cyclone signal interest rate prime that's primary down what's happening in the mains of course in the aprils i should say um no but uh yeah we do see a little bit more of an anti cyclonic signal off the winds coming in from an east northeast direction remember spring is most easterly of the uh seasons so um that's not particularly surprising i don't think um but a definite sort of drier signal particularly in the aprils when we are uh, on the cooler side of enso neutral right okay that is it then for our spring updates what do you make of that everybody interesting wasn't it so uh we've come to the end now thank you so much for following this little season of spring updates i hope you enjoyed what we've uh, done and uh, as i say next week we're releasing our spring forecast so sunday 25th of uh, february that's the date we shall be uh, revealing all gab shall reveal all um <laughs> for you next Sunday, tell you, so you'll find out what we're predicting for the spring then. Thank you so much to uh, Richard for the amazing spring updates gift, and of course, all of the support through this season of spring updates. Thank you so much, Richard. Thank you so much to Ryan as well. Thank you so much to the amazing Shrine and to Terry Scully too. Um, hashtag Team Gab. It has been a joint effort, as always, through this season of spring updates. So thank you so much to uh, to, to Terry, to Richard, to Shrine. Amazing, incredible. Thank you, thank you so much to the wonderful uh, Team Gav. And uh, thank you so much to Paul and Steph as well for our little bundles of joy. Thank you so much to all of you for following the season of spring updates. We have still got the final uh, season one around it, by the way, for spring 2023, uh, 2024 to do, and that will be next Saturday, and then the day after that, that's when we're releasing the Gav's Worthy Spring Forecast. Right, we're going to be back at uh, 6 o'clock, so we'll be live at 6 with your 10 to 14 day of will in that also be including uh ensembles watch and some long range as well i shall see you a little bit later on to that but for the sixth and final spring 2024 update that's all for now and uh, thank you so much for watching see you later on bye for now